and take you back to Wilson Natal with the Minister of Basic Education. Sikala <laughs> Siabonji kwa zinyinda waka kuluwa zinga nizi luze ama projects azo ama class books kanja ama classroom yongi nji ngo lili luti nukelo lifone na kanje kakuluwa zinga nifuti aina ama uniform a mugene kukula luti nukelo lapo no siasebenza nchoba situ national disaster chitu wonka ma department ka government fanta sangan social development zo sisa mtame inform na nge ngwadi na 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 nge 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 mpase fanta bazi koge ngoguza Tina so season something in one so that you need to see who present my announcement national disaster. Chitty song can find this song and only no me a chitty so when they okay, so yes, as we welcome the channel a 24 hour news channel 404 SAPC news. Uh, we are welcoming the minister is doing a walkabout. So let's see if we can be able to. Uh, capture her uh, walking in a very muddy uh, classroom here in the province of KwaZulu-Natal assessing the impacts of the damage. Uh, she's not by herself but uh, with her counterparts in the educational sector. Uh, she's with MEC for Education in KwaZulu-Natal, uh, MEC Kwazim Shingo. Uh, she's about to do her walk up as uh, she's doing her walk about here uh, at the Bretton Wood High School at Umbilo in Durban. I must say that the school achieved a 98 percent of metric results uh, last year. It was it's one of the best performing uh, schools in the in the 98.7 percent uh, in the province of KwaZulu Natal. And in 2020, uh, the school achieved 91 percent. And in 2019, they got a uh, 96 percent. Those are the metric uh, results uh, achieved by this school. As you can see, that is one of the best performing schools in the province of KwaZulu Natali. The school was built in 1966, so this year it marks uh, 56 years since it was built here around uh, the, around the, uh, the city of Etsewini. Let's see if the best Kumalo can follow us as we do the walkabout of the minister seeing the damage and the impacts herself. As you may see that uh, there are also community members uh, who have undertaken a campaign uh, to do a mop up operations the cleaning campaign has begun uh, with the community members as well as especially matriculants uh, who are here helping out, lending a helping hand. And uh, the communities uh, near the communities nearby Umbilo area who are also helping or lending a helping hand uh, to clean up uh, this area. Oh, sorry, let me see. <laughs> we have to apologize for the shaky visuals as we are bringing you the minister doing a walkabout and also uh, checking the impact herself. Uh, she is with also with some of the engineers uh, who will be undertaking uh, the job of ensuring that uh, the schools are being uh, restored, the classrooms are being restored, so that uh, the, the learners are able to learn and study in a conducive environment. Uh, Hundreds and uh, one schools are not accessible. Hundred and one schools are not accessible, uh, and for 630 schools uh, that were affected as the, as a result of the floods, and I must say that 57 learners uh, were also 
reported to have died. Uh, let's get that from MEC perhaps, uh, if we can respond to that about the learners uh, who died as a result of the floods. A any new, perhaps any new figure with regards to that and the numbers that have been affected so far? No, so far the figure stands at 57 learners who have uh, passed on, uh, one educator as well as one food handler. Uh, the information also indicates that uh, there are five uh, learners who are still unaccounted for, uh, but um, that information may change depending on new discoveries and new information as uh, you would know that uh, uh, some um, in some instances the whole family was 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 wiped out by these floods so we keep on getting new information but in terms of our records at the stands 57 and 5 are still unaccounted for okay uh, there's the MEC for Education in KwaZulu Natal, uh, MEC Kwazi Mishengu, confirming the number that we heard from yesterday that uh, 57 learners died as the result of the floods uh, that were raging uh, from last week here in the province of KwaZulu Natal, with Etegwini being the hardest hit, followed by uh, Stenga, or formerly known as Stenga, the area is now called Kwadugusa under the Ilembe uh, district municipality, with 30 deaths there. But uh, the, by the Etiwini area has 399, uh, which is most or more than even 75 percent of the deaths, uh, because uh, the province has suffered uh, the losses of 443. Uh, in the province of KwaZulu Natal, there's a number of people uh, who have died. Let me step aside now so that you can see the minister. They are about to leave uh, after uh, assessing the impact of the damage uh, in the schools. They will be visiting other schools as well here in the province of KwaZulu Natal. Uh, let's see if we can grab, uh, take a word uh, from Numarashia Kaluza. Uh, from Satu in the province of KwaZulu Natal. Uh, you have been with the minister as well as the MEC, provincial MEC Gwazim Shengu, assessing the extent of the damage. You also saw you uh, leading campaigns, uh, providing food parcels to some of the communities and also teachers and learners who were affected as a result. Tell us about that campaign first. You know, as Satu, we believe that we must make an impact in the society. We must not only love the kids, only when they are in front of us in the classroom. We connect with them and we connect with our communities through the children they bring to school. So during times of difficulties, we felt that we have um, something to do. And then we called uh, on our members that they must make donations. There are a lot of donations in the office. We're starting to distribute. And on Saturday, Day we started the Satu kitchen where we're preparing lunch and dinner and we take those uh, uh, meals to the communities in these halls. What is painful is what we are seeing in, the com in those community halls, the children that are there, people, even elders without anything to wear. Others are just on, on their t-shirts and that is why we'll continue as Satu to mobilize the society, those that have not been affected to assist uh, we must not wait for the government, but we must do everything in our power as, as the people. And then we're saying, look uh, in your wardrobes and identify things that you're no longer using so that we can make those contributions. We're even mobilizing you as journalists to say you also have those blankets. You've been attending traditional ceremonies, being given those blankets. Please, can you bring them to Satu House so that we assist our, 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 our people? But today, uh, as it is the school reopening, we are connecting with our site stewards. They are giving us information about learners who do not have families now, but uh, we are in Naples so that we also assist in uniform. We are hopeful because of the engagement we have just had with the minister that at least there are plans that are in place, but we want to see them unfolding. It's um, more about seeing practical things uh, than uh, keep on meeting and meeting. Okay, thanks a lot. That's enough.
Nyoma Rashia Taluza, who is the secretary uh, for SATU in the province of KwaZulu-Natal. Let's see if we can get a word uh, from NATO in your assessment so far. How is the damage and how do you see a uh, government responding to the challenges? No, it's very bad. You know. Okay, my name is Busiso Malinga, the acting president of the National Teachers Union. You know what? The damage uh, uh, actually is very big and no one expected this. But we as National Teachers Union, we believe that uh, education is a social issue. Therefore, we need all uh, people of South Africa to put and join hands together to assist. You know what has happened? We have kids who have lost everything you may think of. Uh, I heard that there is also a, a, a family that lost almost 10 members of, of that particular family before you, you could even speak of school. You know, But in schools, really, it was imperative that schools open so that we could get the actual number because the numbers that have been given to us they were actually thumbs up but if schools are actually open uh, we will be able to get uh, 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 figures that are correct actually and secondly uh, the issue of um, uh, uh, clothes you know we need to, uh, 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 to 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 encourage all the departments of the government to come together and, and actually assist we're very much happy to receive the Minister of Education nationally coming here and fortunately she has a very clear plan to say let's come together and identify the damage. We as National Teachers Union will see what we can contribute because uh, as an oldest organization, a uh, teacher formation, we have been contributing in many uh, uh, instances where there are disasters. So we are prepared, we are going to assist where possible but we will negotiate and uh, cascade that information to the Department of Education to avoid a situation whereby we'll buy things that uh, they've been already donated. We have an obligation to do that. Also, uh, challenges now are for our teachers. Really, the department should provide a psycho, uh, a, a social support because there were also uh, educators that were locked in school. They could not actually get in their homes, uh, I say, three days uh, 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 before today. We are very much worried because I'm told that that the principal left the school. So, in any normal circumstances, a leader should leave the school after all have left. You know, I'm told that 40 learners were locked up at school with almost 10, 10 educators. That was very uh, actually painful because uh, you can't have the leader of the school leaving the school under such situation and i was told that he was nowhere to be found uh, 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 he was also found the next morning so that is really not leadership that we we we, we can appreciate so we will look uh, actually what we can do uh, to make sure that things are back in order because uh case that and it's a very big uh, 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 province uh, that contributes a lot in a metric uh, uh, results you know so that's why I am saying I appreciate that uh, minister came down here because if we get things in order, definitely we'll get even good results out of this. Thank you so much. That's Mr. Malinga, a representative uh, from NATO in the province of KwaZulu Natal, who also spoken to uh, Numa Rashia Taluza, who's the secretary uh, for SATU in the province of KwaZulu Natal, getting both uh, biggest uh, unions, uh, teacher unions, in the province of KwaZulu Natal. Where they are also some of them happy about the progress the government has made so far in order to address the challenges in many schools because as they're saying that even the teachers were also affected in one way or the another so they are here to also support government in their efforts uh, to restore normality in many schools 630 of them that were affected and so many children or school children that were also affected and 57 of them have died as a result of of the storms that were raging from last week, uh, killing many people in the province of KwaZulu Natal, 443, uh, or even the number is even higher. Uh, but also, 101 schools uh, are currently not accessible. But they have agreed that uh, all learners should come to school today so that they will be able to quantify the extent of the damage so that government will address specific needs for such schools that were affected in the province of KwaZulu Natal. Uh, I must say that this school is one of the best performing ones, achieving 98.7% in terms of the metric results and also 
in, uh, that was last year in 2020 getting 91% and 2019 getting 96% in terms of the metric uh, pass rate with some of the learners that we have spoken to saying that uh, they've lost everything especially their projects that have been kept here at the school and also there are some of the classrooms they are very much they don't even know where and how to begin uh, to restore the order the normal order uh, that is currently uh, that's uh, befallen uh, in the schools uh, affected by the floods in the province of KwaZulu Natal uh, with that said respect to you for now Vosi while I still have you I wonder if you can hear me I just want to say that you saw the devastation and the destruction uh, firsthand you spoke earlier about what Duguza and you were there yesterday now making a roundup of the schools uh, just what sense do you have what new information do you have about uh, the uh, destruction of by the floods Yes, uh, the floods left a trail of destruction, as you may have seen in our visuals, even yesterday at Squadugusa, the bridges and also a lot of infrastructure uh, being damaged. Uh, I don't think, uh, I may say that uh, I can confidently say that there's something really new because a uh, lot of information has also been on social media, that the verified one is also there on our visuals as SAPC News as we have been updating you about the latest information with regards uh, to the floods in the province of Zulu Natal with the Minister Angie Mutseha uh, saying that about 442 million rand has already been set aside in order to rebuild the infrastructure and also the equipment and the material that has suffered as a result of the raging storms in the province of Zulu Natal with more than 600 schools already affected and number of uh, people affected uh, by the flood. Uh, we've got more than 40,000 people who were affected by the floods and most of those people that were visited especially in the low-lying areas in the informal settlement areas those are the kind of people who have uh, died as a result of the raging storms i remember we're going to in an area where 10 family members uh, died uh, were having uh, only uh, the divers have only uh, recovered four people out of the ten uh, family members so the impact is very huge and currently they are still trying to uh, ensure that they bring to surface uh, the bodies of those people because they do believe now they've already accepted uh, that the f six remaining are already dead uh, uh, and they could be stuck somewhere in some of the debris or the rivers just across the Inanda area, Matigwe River, Umzinyati uh, rivers that are currently swollen and uh, the divers as you may have heard that uh, uh, day just before yesterday uh, died, two divers, uh, police divers uh, died uh, as well as a dog which was also a sniffer dog uh, from K9 unit that was also accompanying some of these heroes uh, who are now heroes they died in the line of duty so there's been huge the impact is very huge uh, when it comes to the, the floods which are still uh, many people are saying that uh, they've suffered a lot in the province of KwaZulu Natal that's why we are seeing uh, a solidarity coming from all the corners uh, even from the United Nations also sending their words of condolences and also shocked uh, by the damage uh, caused by, by, by the floods in the province of KwaZulu Natal, uh, with Cyril Ramaphosa, the president, also visiting uh, the province of KwaZulu Natal uh, just to ensure that uh, all the funds and monies are being sourced in order to help uh, those who are currently in distress and also the, the, the barriers are also being I mean, uh, provided by the state. Currently, the government did say that uh, they will be helping all. All the people who were affected uh, by, by the storms but as we speak uh, those uh, the people who were affected especially those uh, who, who had died and they, their families do not know where uh, to find those people uh, because some of them are still trapped under the rubble and it's very difficult for now to, to get those people even though we have had uh, search and rescue teams who have been out and about here in the province of KwaZulu-Natal uh, combing through 
the rivers, the debris, but at the moment uh, we're told that uh, even at Inanda alone, seven people are still missing. Those people are believed to be trapped under the rubble because of the extent of the damage at Inanda, which also remains one of the hardest hit areas with a lot of people uh, dying in that area of, 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 of Inanda in the province or under the city of Etegwini, which alone has 399 people who died as a result of the floods and what was a, a, a 30 people who died there. So the, the impact is very huge and those people who have lost their loved ones do not know how to bury their loved ones in dignity because at the moment even the grave sites uh, have been eroded so they do not know where to, to bury the, their loved ones and they've been uh, asked to delay uh, the, the burials uh, due to the situation that we find ourselves in at the moment. Uh, yes. Thank you so much, uh, Vosi. Of course, we are waiting uh, that cocktail briefing that's uh, going to take place any moment 